Come one, come all, and welcome, dear guests, to this week's celebration of friendship through Pokemon battling. I am Coach Sache of the Pastoria City Porygon Zeds versus Coach Mike of the Sunny Shore City Sharpedos. And we have a thrilling match for you to watch. I'll start the battle now. And it begins with his cool sunglasses showing off. Uh, the battle actually began with both of us forgetting Z-Stones and realizing it. I forgot, and he goes, I forgot too, after we started the battle again. So this is our second attempt at starting a battle with different leads. I make a horrible misplay in the beginning, and I send out Magirna thinking I can set up immediately, and forget that Magirna is slower than Cobalion, who frequently runs Thunder Wave, and was running Thunder Wave, and I promptly get paralyzed and have a full paralysis on what was going to be a ship here. So, that doesn't matter. Um, and I go out into Chief Beef, and at this point I look at his team, and I realize he didn't bring any Flying Pokemon, or even any Earthquake Resist, and actually brought four Pokemon weak to Earthquake. So at this point I knew it was going to be a big battle for Chief Beef. So I'm running max defense on it, um, just because it was a simple set. I was pretty busy this week, so all my Pokemon are running less specialized sets than I normally do. Um, and he Iron Heads me, which I just decide I'm using this to get my health up um, because I'm using the Rocky Helmet, which is an item I like to use and comes in very handy this match. And uh, he withdraws after he realizes this is going to be a 1v1 match. My whole goal is to keep my HP up because I know I'm going to need it for when Victini comes out. So, he actually switched when I was about to Earthquake, which means I catch his Espeon on the switch, which is not a great switch for Espeon. So, it's hit by the Sandstorm, unfortunately it doesn't die. I don't know what crafty games it's going to play, so I go ahead and I switch out into Zatu um, with the anticipation of screens, and I was going to either U-turn to kill it, and then switch back in and defog the screens away or set up screens of my own. It goes for Psy Shock, which gives me an easy opportunity to switch into Greninja, assuming the Psy Shy Shock is playing again, which was a bit of a uh, ballsy play. It could have been carrying Dazzling Gleam or something else. So I get in for free, and he goes ahead and gives me Espeon, which means I get my Battle Bond. So that's one KO for Greninja. And um, after this, you'll see my next play. There will be the the battle bond, which takes a while. A play that I realized I calculated afterwards, I could have done a little bit differently, um, but I played safe rather than make a large attempt at something. So he sends out Steel Yo Girl, uh, great name, and I go ahead and I switch out the hip out on. What I had done is after I switched, I calculated, and Surf would have guaranteed KO Cabalion uh, from this, this, um, this percentage, so I could have stayed in with Greninja and stacked up my my KOs, but I, what I wanted to avoid was the Thunder Wave just in case, and I knew that anything he had for me, uh, Chief Beat could eat like a champ. So now, instead of slacking off, I decided to just go for the Earthquake. I go for the Throat, chomp him, and Cobalion goes down to Britain. Um At this point, I was anticipating Kyurem to come out, and he does come out. And I had two options here. I could have gone to Slowbro or I could have gone to Celesteela. And I opt for Celesteela because it had the means of killing Kiram faster than Slowbro. Slowbro would have tanked the hits just as well. Um, it took about 30% maximum from either of his attacks that I assumed he was using. And Leftovers revealed it was probably the sub roost set with Earth Power and Ice Beam that runs a lot in UU. Um, so I know that Celesteela can take two of them, and then I could automatize, which actually puts me exactly one speed point higher than Kyurem at plus two speed, and I can Heavy Slam, which, uh, could, it had a chance to one hit KO from this range, uh, but with leftovers I was planning more on the two hit KO. So, I go for Heavy Slam, um, again, I could have used Slow Bro at this point, and... Uh, it was a toxic stall set with Slowbro, 
um, Toxic Slack off, basically, and I could have just eaten these attacks and stalled out this the same way, which would have given an opportunity to switch, but this let him, uh, it let me just deal with Kiram more quickly, because Kiram did offer a bigger threat to my team. Especially with his Earthquake weakness, I wanted to keep Chief Beef as healthy as I possibly could. So I get my attack boost, and I have uh, my speed boost, but he goes into Jeff, the Lycanroc, who I know I can't take an Excel Rock from here, so I go ahead and switch back into Chief Beef um, for preservation's sake. If I were playing on Showdown, I probably would have... Um, just sack Celesteela there, but I get points for not sacking Pokemon. So I decided not to sack and just to go into Chief B, um, who is going to be able to take any of these physical hits and slack the damage off. And uh, the Rocky Helmet obviously is kind of doing my work for me, as well as the Life Orb. So really, Chief Beef is going to get this KO, but it <laughs> isn't that much of a KO. It's mostly passive damage. Um, one of the reasons I didn't want to go Chief Beef on Light Rock is just in case I did have to switch out to Greninja later, he could have played these switches so that Greninja came into Light Rock, and with my Sand Up, it would have been able to actually survive Water Shirt and, um, unless I hit five times in Ash Form, I think. So after Sword Stance, Crunch does about 50% damage, and I do go for the Earthquake here, which could have been a misplay. I probably could have just slacked off, but. Um, it ends up not mattering too much. He goes down, Chief Beef racks up another KO. Um, and he goes into Melted Sunday, who is his muck. Another non-resist for Earthquake. And he finally, finally gets rid of my Rocky Helmet, much to the chagrin of whatever surviving Pokemon he has left. Um, and I do take this opportunity to slack off. I don't know exactly what muck set he was using. I'm assuming... After watching this now, it was Choice Banded, because he continues to go for knockoff, um, which is a good muck set, but if he had any kind of toxic or stall moves, it probably would have come out better. And I get a higher roll on that, I think I had like a 90% chance of hailing him after Stealth Rocks and Sand. Um, and here is the great play. Uh, Mike hit the Z button, and it didn't register. So Victini uses regular Celebrate, which of course does absolutely nothing. Um, and he lost the battle after that, I did get a crit. Um, so there's a couple of ways that could have ended there without the 6-0 sweep that we went through. Uh, if he had Z celebrated, it would have made it so he could take two earthquakes from me. And I was at a high percentage of health. Uh, the first situation is that I still get the crit, and it hits through his defense, and it okos him anyway. Uh, the second situation is that I don't get the crit. He's able to get off the stored power, and if it was a low roll of stored power, I still would have survived and killed him that turn. If it was a high roll, I would have died. He would have been at about 40% health or so. And um, at that point, Greninja could come in and either, barring a Focus Blast miss, could have surfed it to death, but I believe that Water Shuriken did kill from that range. And a third situation is if Greninja didn't work out, Slowbro could come in and tank two or three of any of those attacks, and I was carrying Shadow Ball and Scald specifically for Victini. So... Uh, in the end, the Celebrate ended up not mattering too much, but it is unfortunate when a misclick happens and the battle could have gone differently. Um, so, yeah, that puts me... I believe this locks me into the playoffs, which means my last battle with Jacob next week. You guys are about to see some hella strange sets for things that do not matter. Um, I don't think I have anyone close to the MVP race, especially because Magirna was stalled out this week. So... That's all I got. Go find something to celebrate.